Before we go any further, just want to thank all the people over on Patreon because without their help, none of this upgraded content that you'd be seeing would be possible. Over on the Patreon, you get exclusive sneak peeks at upcoming video. You also get access to the Patreon only Discord server. Coming up soon, I'm going to be working on talking about other anime that I can't talk about here on YouTube, like say ReZero, Konosuba, and etc. I'm also going to start posting the scripts for video essays and every three months we do an anime and manga haul. We also are going to open up the patreon only discord server to youtube members at the two dollar price tier which also means that members will be seeing their name here alongside the patron but with that being said let's get back into today's video yo what's going on everybody it's your boy Naruto to explain here bringing you guys another review for board to Naruto next generations episode 263 and now that episode 263 is done in the books we got a lot to talk about and i'm gonna go ahead and start the review off by talking about a few things that really stood out before we get into the recap for because this episode keeping it 100 with you there was a little bit of a lag towards the middle of the episode in my opinion you might have enjoyed it but for me personally there were a few things that took me out of the episode so we're going to address that first before we get into the positives and the recap so towards the middle i did get a little bit kind of bored with it but i understand the concept of what they are going for and i kind of like the idea behind what they're trying to do i just don't think that it worked in an effective manner the same thing when you look at some of the comedy aspects in this episode the exaggeration it really fell off and i'm wondering how much of this is going to be corrected in the home media release so what you see on crunchyroll and hulu and etc is typically only the broadcast version the blu-ray version that's on the home media release doesn't get updated for a few months so some of the exaggerations on some of the faces i felt like it fell flat and for what they were trying to do concept wise with the comedy sections the exaggeration need to be on point so for the 12 principles of animation exaggeration is one of those aspects i really feel like that fell flat i feel like that kind of kneecapped the middle portion of the episode now with that part out of the way let's back things up a little bit and get into the overall episode itself so i like the idea of opening up the episode and you got himawari and kawaki they're spending their time together and you see the two of them and they're walking towards the academy and kawaki's telling himawari keep this a secret from boruto and team seven don't don't let them know that this is the real reason I'm going to the academy. You clearly see Kawaki agitated by the whole idea of him even having to be at the academy. So I did like seeing that because that's again more of that build up towards Boruto chapter 58 being animated because you see that Kawaki's looking at this more so like it's a waste of time. Now, what I will say is that the idea of bringing Boruto and Team 7 in to teach at the academy and in particular teach at Kawaki's class, I thought that that was a good idea. But again, like I said in the intro, the expressions really fell flat during that whole section right there. But the idea of Team 7 being there and not knowing that Kawaki's on a mission, I found that to be interesting because on one hand, I can kind of understand why. Because if Boruto in particular knew that Kawaki was guarding a princess and this is a high stakes type of a mission, it would be one of those things where Boruto would want to at least check in. So I can understand the idea of keeping them in the dark because Boruto wanted to check in, Sarda being somebody that is overly ambitious i can kind of understand this whole idea of kind of keeping them off to the side when we got the episode summaries i thought maybe potentially this was a situation where we were just going to have team seven checking in on kawaki make sure that the mission's going smoothly but that wasn't the case and i think that this was a better idea storytelling wise to not go that route so i thought that that part right there was fine but when team seven shows up after they get all this hype of oh yeah they're rookies but they gone on s rank missions which we as the audience know like the owl mission ended up turning into an s rank mission once kashin koji and kawaki showed up the deeper mission ended up turning into an s rank mission went back for the rematch the same thing when you get to the situation with boro so we've seen that team seven's definitely more experienced and i I like how when Boruto and the class are interacting and you see Boruto and Sarda and Miski and they're using all their elemental jutsu, it really just goes to further show and highlight how far ahead Boruto and his team are in comparison to somebody like the school teacher Hana, who she can use change and talk of nature, but she can't do anything on the same scale of Boruto and his classmates. And I think that sometimes fans, we're aware of just how skilled Boruto and his classmates are, but 
but at the same time don't truly understand how skilled and how strong they actually are you go with the boards of movie novelization they were already being compared at that point to Jonin. and when you look at what kakashi said during the academy arc he was already saying that boruto was easily tuning level and maybe even potentially a little higher so i like what you see right here when boruto and team seven show up and just immediately upstage the teacher and what i also found interesting was that the kids that himawari had done the trial with to get into the academy i like that we get a moment to check in with them it feels like that's more testing the waters to see how they interact or whatnot and how they get over with the audience we might see them as a team now i liked it when we saw borto and he's demonstrating for the classroom how to actually use a rasengan and you see sarda she's using the fire style jutsu we see miski using the lightning snake jutsu you see their extreme shock control in the sense that they're not just going all out but they're doing just enough to output enough chakra to perform the jutsu i thought that that was nice to see that aspect right there and you get this moment where borto begins to start teasing kawaki and he's like yo you know it's so cool that you're coming here to the academy to learn the proper way to be a ninja even though you're technically a gany right now i'm going to give you my full support so you can become a splendid ninja you see borto just eating this shit up and it's one of those things where you're looking at borto you realize why he's got that shitty grin on his face and when kawaki gets fed up with it he lashes out at him for a second and the borto and kawaki have a moment where they swap hands for a brief moment and himawari is getting totally embarrassed because she's like every time borto sarda and kawaki get together you know things end up like this they start fighting and this is where i kind of feel like the episode started kind of falling apart when they start trying to implement some of the comedy aspects and what I will say is that Borto has a good idea to try and teach the class the whole thing about teamwork. But the problem is, is that we're seeing the downside to Borto being a genius. So the thing you have to keep in mind is that the smartest people are not always cut out to be a teacher. That takes a very special skill set to actually be able to teach people. You might be the best at doing something, but you might not be the best to explain to somebody how to actually do something. And you see it with borto that's not his calling card borto sarda miski sarda has a little bit of an idea that this might not be a good idea but she's going along with it anyway but this classroom is way too immature to handle anything like teamwork because borto decides to essentially pull kakashi's bell test on them where he only brings enough food for half of the classroom he splits them up he tells them to fight each other he kind of drops a hint that like hey you can work together if you want to you can fight individually if you want to but only the people that are holding the balls are going to be the ones who are going to be able to eat and borto had the underlying idea of like well once the whole training mission is over i'm going to split all the food up and they're going to realize that they can share food with each other and it's a good idea in concept but it's one of those things where that's a team of prodigies they catch on to things a lot faster even in the academy in the early portions you could see that there was some level of understanding teamwork with them but again boruto's class is a special case not everybody born in this generation as we're seeing with himawari's class not everybody born in Boruto's generation are going to be prodigies and once in a lifetime talents. And like Shino and Anko say, that was a little bit too fast too quickly. And I kind of like seeing that there are some things that boards on team seven cannot do again that's just not their calling card but they're so talented that you have to do it shino and anko do at the end of the episode which is invite them to come back to teach at the academy because as they start moving up at the ranks they're going to be expected to give back and give special instruction at the academy to the next generation so they're going to need it for the development ultimately especially given the fact that borto and miski they're just other geniuses and sarda is somebody who wants to become hokage she's going to have to do what naruto did which is she's going to have to routinely start giving special instructions at the academy because she needs to see firsthand the students who she's going to be in charge of when she eventually becomes hokage and those students are ninja which if you want more information on why kakashi sent naruto to the academy to teach and what classes naruto taught at the academy i recommend checking out the videos you're seeing on the screen right now i'll also leave them down in the 
description box for anybody that's interested. There'll be in links one and two in the description. Those videos are also in the after Naruto Shippuden playlist where we talk about everything that happened after Shippuden that you did not see in the anime that goes more in detail about stuff that might seem like a plot hole in Boruto. Now, the other thing that I will say though is we have this moment where one of the kids that Himawari had teamed up with when she did the Academy trial episode ends up taking things way too literally and seriously and he ends up starting the whole conflict and splitting the classroom up and you really get a moment to actually see Hana the school teacher begin to start shining right here because the classroom they're boycotting she's going over her students personnel files and she has a moment where she reaches out to one of the students and she's like hey you look up to Mike Guy don't you understand that Mike Guy and the Six Okage, they were rivals at one point and they didn't always see eye to eye, but they managed to coexist. Can't you consider doing something like that? I thought that that was a nice touch right there for her to actually implement something like that. The same thing when it comes to the kid that was on Himawari's team that he looks up to the Hokage. She brought him to Ichiraki Ramen stand in order to have him eat at a place that is near and dear to Naruto's heart. And She's just doing her best to try and appeal. And it's one of those things where the students understood what she was trying to do. And they essentially give her an olive branch. This comes after Borto tries and fails to bring the two sides together. And I understand from a writing perspective why you do this. Because it just shows that even though Borto and Team 7, they're far more skilled than this academy teacher, she's more skilled than them and things other than ninjutsu. So I understand what they're doing here. Again, I just felt like the middle part of this episode fell flat, but that's more so of an animation critique, not necessarily about the writing. Normally when I do these reviews, I kind of just focus on the craft elements, in particular the writing elements, but but today we had to switch it up a little bit. Both things can be true. You can have a section of the episode that falls flat and you can also have parts of it where it's actually good writing, which is why I said earlier in the review, like this is a good idea concept wise, but it wasn't executed the best. And that's more than just the writing side of it. Even when we get to the end of the episode where Hana Sensei has brought the two sides of the classroom back together, while it's a payoff from a writing perspective, the journey that got us there, I don't think that it hit on all the elements that it needed to. I think it was a great script idea, but I don't think that we got there the way we needed to. And that's what I was worried about when I saw Studio Fortune was the one that was gonna be doing the episode. They've been hit or miss with Boruto in the past, and this episode feels like good concept, but the episode overall is a miss. That being said, make sure you keep notifications turned on because I'm going to be dropping a second video today because the Boruto manga is out. So if you read the manga and you've not checked out the chapter review, make sure to click here to do so. And again, keep notifications turned on because we're going to have a manga video dropping later today as well.